Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric, back again with another video. And right now I am in FSD, heading from Virginia all the way to Colorado. Almost, I guess, three quarters of the way, cross country drive. And I wanted to give you some impressions on uh, the supercharging network and my experience with it. So the nice thing is right off the bat in a Tesla and probably the most questions I get in terms of like, oh, how do you drive your car on a long distance if it's electric? You know, because obviously people are very used to having gas stations, you know, almost at every single interstate exit. Uh, currently I'm right now on a big interstate, but I want to talk specifically about the software inside the Tesla. So inside the Tesla, I put, you know, obviously my car started in Virginia and I'm heading to Denver, which is a multi-day trip. It's rather long. It doesn't require a lot of supercharging stops, but the car is smart enough to automatically route you through the supercharging stations. But I do have some critiques with that. So specifically, I'm zooming out on the map so I can reference the specific cities. So I'm talking about uh, Columbus, Ohio to Indian, uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. So I stopped in Columbus, Ohio. I noticed that there was a couple charging stations and when I left my house in Virginia, um, it automatically routed me through a particular supercharging station in downtown Columbus, Ohio, which was about five miles off the major highway. So not super convenient compared to most supercharging stations. Now, when I got there and plugged in, it was then that I noticed that the maximum kilowatt per hour that that station had was only like 72 kilowatts, which is really low. Most supercharging stations are around 150 and some are 200 and even more, 250 and more. And so then that caused me to look at, okay, what are the next stops that I have planned throughout the route? And so in particular, when I left Columbus, Ohio, it wanted me to stop right above Dayton, uh, which was about an hour drive, and then stop again in Indianapolis. And so I looked closer after I had to spend a lot of time in downtown Columbus at that slower supercharger, I looked closer at the charging station right above Dayton where it wanted me to stop and that was maxing out at 150 kilowatt uh, charging speed versus uh, there was a smaller city that was a little bit further than Dayton called Richmond um, in Richmond Indiana so you right you cross over the state line in Richmond Indiana and that was a 250 watt station so of course I cancel the map and I route myself right to that Richmond, Indiana station. And it says, you know, based on my current charger, I had already left the downtown Columbus, Ohio, super, the supercharger that, I mean, technically, I guess, I wouldn't call it a supercharger. I would call it a slow charger, although it was much faster than a home charger. Um, but I had already left there and it said I could get to the faster supercharger in Richmond that was 250 watts and I would skip a charger in Dayton, Ohio. And so I'm on that track right now and it said originally I was gonna get there with 2%, which is fine to me. Yeah, it's cutting it close. Um, and now I'm down to 1% and I have a message up saying, you know, stay below 70 miles per hour to reach your destination. Currently I'm at 70 miles per hour. I'm not too concerned. I have 1%, um, it says I'm gonna have 1% when I do reach there. Now, there's a couple things that I wanna mention here. The numbers that you get when Tesla routes you through, when I say Tesla, I'm talking about the software in the car. The numbers that you get in terms of the amount of minutes that you have to spend at a supercharger and the supercharger itself that it picks out for you is very, very conservative, meaning most of these supercharging stops, when you look at it, uh, you know, it shows you like, I think I have six stops today. It shows me all those six stops and typically it'll say anywhere from like 25 to 30 minutes. And what I found is my car will say, you know, ready, ready to continue your trip 
after about half that time. So the superchargers that said, you know, 30 minutes that you need to sit there and charge really only took me 15 minutes from the time I plugged in till the time I got an alert on my phone saying that it was ready to go or I saw in the car that it was ready to continue on your trip. So again, the charging times that you get are very conservative in the Tesla. So the Tesla software is built in such a way that it probably sets you up for success versus, you know, if they said 15 minutes and it really took you 20, then I guess, you know, people would kind of gripe about that. But, um, you know, that's from my experience and that's from the faster 150 to 250 watt, uh, so the uh, higher watt stations. So right now, you know, I had that message go away, stay under 70 miles per hour. It's still showing me I'm gonna get to this next supercharger with 1%. Um, of course, I'll update you guys if I don't make it, but I am very confident um, this is how I typically do it. And it does typically, you know, I like getting to the charger with that super low percent versus um, you'll know if you have a Tesla and you do like a multi-charge trip like this, it'll want to keep you around that like 18 to 23, somewhere in that range, around 20% is how low it gets you versus I like getting down and pushing the battery a little bit more and staying like 5% or, you know, I'll even push it like I'm doing now down to 1%, 2% when I get to a supercharger because that first 10 minutes at a supercharger, I'm already up to like 30%, definitely depending on the amount of kilowatts it's able to put into the battery. And that has to do with, you know, if it's a version three supercharger versus a version two. video I made it here with zero percent and so something I want to note I talked about how the numbers were conservative um, in the Tesla especially when I was on the highway it said I was gonna get here with two percent battery now I think it goes off of the speed limit I was going over the speed limit to stay with the flow of traffic and then shortly I would say like um, after I shot the the clip that you guys just saw um, that's when the car then recalculated, I think, um, and then it showed me that I would arrive here with negative 3%. And then so what I did was I slowed down significantly down to about uh, 70 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour, and then 50 miles an hour. Um, and then I did arrive here with 0%. Um, it did improve what it said. So originally it said I was going to arrive here with negative 3%. And then when I did slow down, it did say I was gonna arrive with negative 1%. Um, and I did arrive here at 0% battery, but it did say I was gonna arrive with negative 1%. Definitely way closer than I wanna cut it for sure. Um, so do not recommend cutting it that close. Um, if you're going to do kind of what I did, where it's like skip a supercharger, um, I definitely, recommend don't do what I did and stay at the speed limit or below. And I did ignore some of the messages that came up on the screen where it's like, stay under, you know, 75, stay under 65 miles an hour um, in order to make it to the next charger. I was like, ah, it's fine. But obviously like, you know, it was a little nerve wracking. Uh, I'm glad I am here. I'm glad I didn't have to use the roadside assistance that comes with a Tesla. So learn from my mistake and definitely pay attention to what you see on the screen. All right, there you have it. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. Share this video with a friend and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.